Hello, Carol here again. Thank you for coming back. It's lovely to see you all again. Um, before I actually start on today's video, I want to say a really big thank you um, for the last two videos. Everyone has done um, a lot of supporting from those two videos and especially those that have gone along to the coffee shop and um, either purchased me a cup of tea or purchased uh, one of the digitals that's on there your support is really greatly appreciated so thank you very very much for that um but to see the numbers increase on the views is amazing absolutely amazing um and i really needed that boost uh, to get youtube and google to uh play along with the game so to speak so um by way of a thank you i've done another freebie digital kit which again will be on the coffee shop now for those yesterday who were struggling to get the labels uh digital little glitch glitch in the matrix uh it had removed the file for for the download anyway i went, went and checked and uh, I've put it back on. So if you missed out yesterday on the labels, you can go back to the coffee shop and it's there now. So you'll be able to download those. OK, I don't know whether you can tell from my new little box because uh, I decorated another one up this morning. Uh, what today's video is going to be about and it's a little bit of a mass make one. But it's also relating to the swap that i'm going to be doing on my facebook group okay so i'll show you the digital kit and then it'll probably give the game away so it's called awesome buttons so what i've done is i've made some button cards and I've included these three strips of images so that you can punch out your own button fronts. So there's that as well. And then there's four button cards here and little tabs uh, or tags or labels with the word awesome buttons on it. OK, so that's the free digital bank holiday, free digital to say thank you for all your support. That's going to be over on the coffee shop. OK, so. Let's get started. The thing that I want to do first is talk to you about the box. So this was the clue that there's a handmade button on the front of the box. And again, it's just Velcroed on. But I want to show you what's in the box. What's in the box? So I've got these glassine bags. And I've got some scraps of... Um, oh. Little scraps as well, apparently. There we go. Get rid of that. Um, of file folders. Um, because I want to punch some bases out of these. And then I've got some pre-cut circles. Um, so these are the, the bigger circles, which are the, is from my one-inch punch. And these are the file folder circles, also from the one-inch punch. So they're from in the bigger bags. And then in the smaller bags, there's the... Which one is it? Three-quarters of an inch circle punch okay so that's the one that i'm going to be using now because that's the size that i need just close that back up oh my bows come undone need to redo that okay so basically save all your scraps of file folders and just when you're bored another one of those when you're watching TV, annoy your partner by doing the snapping <laughs> of the punches. They'll be like, will you shut that up? I'm trying to watch this. And best to do quite a few, just to annoy them a bit more, you know, because you can. But to, to have quite a few of these, because we're going to layer these up. And you're going to need three for each button 
So I want three, six, nine, twelve. I want twelve. How many have I done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So busy yakking, you see, I didn't know how many I'd done. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We'll do a couple more, or one more, for good measure. Two more. Can I get another one out of that? <sighs> just. There we go. So we've got a few now to be getting on with. But I'll just keep these scraps in that box, or I will do. Now I've made it. Um, and then I want the front covers for the buttons. So I'm going to just punch two out of here for now because I want to use some of the other papers. Um, but basically, you can just go along, pick out the bits that you like. One. Or just punch out random two. Okay, so again, I could cut these into strips and cut them in half and keep those in the box as well. So I want two of those. Hang on, where's my box gone? Because I want something out of there. I want that little. There we go. That's the one that I want. The other one that I want. I told you. Make a song out of anything. <laughs> right, so. First things first. We're going to stick three of these together. And what you want is... Uh, a glue that's not stuck up. Come on, stop being posh. And you're just going to draw a circle with your glue. You don't want any glue in the middle because we're going to be poking holes in that. So I'm going to stick that one to that one. Maybe you can see this all right because they're quite small, aren't they? Maybe I need to zoom in. I'll stick this one on and then I'll zoom it in. So we've got three layers of the file folder card, okay? And then we'll do that one because it's pretty. And then again, a circle of glue. Oh, have you seen the colour of my hands? Look, <laughs> been using ink. So that much glue. And then stick that one on top of there. Make sure that they all meet up nicely. If you've got any little bits of paper sticking out where it doesn't punch quite right, if you get an emery board, I just run. Did you like the sound effects there? Um, just run it round the edge, and it just gets rid of those excess. And then ink up. Try and catch all the edges of all those layers of paper. I knew there was a reason why I'd done an extra one. There we go, that's better for you now, isn't it? So we'll do another one. So one, two, and a third one. So we'll sit that on there. Oh, it seems funny looking at the camera with my hands all zoomed in. <laughs> so you want either uh, the floral bits printing onto a thin card or a decent thickish paper because we know what punches are like. They get a bit temperamental, don't they? And if you are um, punching out from a thin paper, add a stick a, a book page on the back. What am I looking for, me ink? Um, stick a book page on the back and then um, it gives it that extra strength. And the punch goes, oh, don't mind that. That's all right. Oh, that's going quite fast, isn't it, me doing it that close? I'll do it slower. There we go. So that's that now inked up. I'm going to make some more, but I'll do those off camera because I want some more. Um, that was my mother calling. She interrupted us. 
I'll call it back in a bit. So, yes, I want some other colours um, buttons as well. I don't want them all the same. So, here you can see, look, I've done... If you followed any of the videos recently, and, and please go and have a look to our new subscribers. Um, I inked up a load of book pages. And uh, these were they from the book pages. Um, so, I've... You know, I'd got all sorts of little scraps, so I just went through and punched loads. So I want, I want one of those, and I want a book page one. Let's have a look and see if I can find a really, really nice one. It's quite cute. Let's do them. I want four, don't I? One, two, three, four. Yeah. No, that one. There we go. I'll push those to one side for now. Okay, so I'm going to go off and go and make those two in a moment. The reason why I'm glad that I cut the other or punched the other um, circle out is I want to make a template. I'd already made a template for the uh, larger circle. But the way to make yourself a little template is just put an actual button in situ and then with your pokey tool just poke through. And then you've got a little template then with some holes in so that when it comes to punching the holes in these decide which way around you want it put your little template on top and then poke your holes and then you know that they're all going to be you won't see it there but it's on the back um, but they'll all then be sort of in the same spot so put your little template on. Ooh. And then book and book. Okay. So those will go in my box as well. So I'm going to go off and go and make those and then I'll be back. So this is the button card that I'm going to make up. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to um, corner chomp me corners and I'm doing them on three eighths of an inch and then I'm going to ink up around the edges Then I'm going to lay my buttons out. So we'll have you, and then we'll have you, then you, then you. Okay. So now I can work out the spacing. Oh, I can't see the holes on that one. Well, oh yeah. In fact, I want to swap you and you round. You can go there, and you can go. No. Not there, there, there we go. All right, so once you've got your spacing in place, get your poker tool again and just poke through those holes that you made on your button. Didn't get that quite in the right spot, but there we go. As I've said many a time before, a blind man would be happy to see it. Now, the two that I made up off camera, I've done the holes much, much wider apart or much further apart because then you'll see more of the stitching. Okay, so if I take those off and keep them there in the order that I want them in, threaded my needle up and um, I put a knot in the end. Now, the thread that I'm using is, I, I don't know what it is, but it's a thread that I use for attaching my signatures to the cover because it's a really strong thread. But, you know, ordinary sewing cotton, probably not enough strength in it for this. So I put a little knot in the end of my thread and I'm going to bring the needle through so that the little knot sits on the back. And then I'm going to stitch my first button in place. And the thread can have a tendency to tangle. So, 
because I've got quite a long thread. And then I should be able to go through that hole and come through the other side. And pull that in very carefully because we've got to remember that we're stitching this onto card so it'll easily rip. <coughs> And I'll do this second one and then I'll give you another little tip. Which I should have done before I put that one and this one on. But hey ho. There it is. And there. And then I can carefully pull that through. Now I've made a much bigger stitch on that second one than I did on the first one and I'm going to go through it again. Am I? No, I'm not. <laughs> nah. I did on the other one that I did. Now I put some micropore on the back where the holes were so that as you were stitching it gave the card a little bit more support but if you want to cover over your stitching after you've done <laughs> put the buttons in place that's entirely up to you <laughs> but one of the things that i would say is that your needle will pick up the sticky from off the microport so all i'm going is i'm going from one button down to the next one I'm not finishing off the thread or anything. I'm just taking it from one to the other. I have to bring these a bit nearer to me these days. Eyesight, not what it used to be. Oh, and the, the box still hasn't turned up, you know. Still can't find it. So if you ever see a video called Eureka... You'll know I've found it and that it's a quick video to show you what it actually looked like. Come on through. There we go. So, yeah, so you've got to be real careful when you're stitching these in place because it can really easily rip the card. Then, want to go through that all? And then we want to go through that hole. And then we want to go through that hole. But already you can see that these buttons have just brought this card to life. I just think it looks ace. I love it. You might not, but I do. And then I'm just going to wrap the thread around the back. Wrap it through again and then put my needle and thread through the loop once and twice to just knot it off. I mean, how pretty, how pretty is that? Look how pretty that is. Aww. Now, um, I want one of the awesome buttons labels and I won't do it on this one because it just is too fiddly and it takes too much time but I will show you one that I've done in a second but I put brads um, at each of the ends Uh, inked it up and then I poked a little hole there and a little hole there because paper mania do really tiny tiny little brads and then I put that on there I'll leave it for now because I might put the brads on in a bit did I do it? yeah I did it off centre Let's do this one central. 
because the other one I did off centre. Okay, so that would stick there. And then the other thing that I did was I got, kept all my stamps out, them little ones. And thank you everyone for the tips on how to make your stamp stick to your block. They are ones that I'd heard before anyway, and, and my stamps do need cleaning. So I've chosen uh, number two, six, I don't know whether that's a seven or a one. Where am I going to put you? Mm. I'll put you up there. Now these would actually make, this particular one would actually make quite a cute tag. There you go. 261. So that's going to go on there when I put some brads in place. And I'll show you the one that I made earlier there where the brads are in place. How cute. How very, very cute. I'm loving these. Now, the re part of the reason why I'm showing how to make these up, as I say, is to do with the swap that we're doing on group. And again, if you watched um, an earlier video of mine last week, this is one of the items that would just look adorable in these pockets. Don't you think? Oh, I love this pocket. I love this button card. No one's having this. This is mine. <laughs> Now the next one that I want to show you um, is this one and I'm, I'm not going to make it up because again it just takes too long to make all of them up. So basically you could it out as one piece and then you're going to fold it in half on this crease line here. And you might need to do a little bit of trimming down. Okay, so that's it now folded in half and then we're going to open it back up and we're going to fold it in half that way okay so that it will fold in half like that and then it'll fold in half like that to make the little booklet now as i say you might need to do a little bit of trimming around the edges but this is what i made so I made a little booklet, put a little, fancy little button on the front and then when you open it up I cut out two pieces of fabric and um, I just stitched some buttons on. I glued the fabric in place but then I stitched through, I had it open, I stitched through the one layer of card. So I stitched them here and here and then once the buttons were on the fabric the fabric was on the card, I'd stitched the card, then I folded that up and made it into the booklet. Okay, now these buttons were just big plain white ones which I covered with paper napkins. So, um, so you could utilise some paper napkin buttons as well, all right, but they're just on little flaps of fabric. And then when I glued the book together, I just glued it along, along along this bottom edge here to glue the two together so that you end up with a little pocket space there and of course I could add some ribbon I could put some elastic around it to keep it closed but again I wonder if it'll fit in let me just check it might be a bit too deep because I've used big buttons So that does fit in there, but if I was going to make one of these to go in here, I'd actually use much smaller buttons in there. Okay, so that's that. Now, as I say, I'm not going to show you all the other cards, how to make them up, because it's pretty much all the same. So this is another one of the cards, which I've put the um, paper buttons on. And then I would actually put a piece of card on the back as well to just cover it, all of this over. This one is actually these two here. 
because what I did was I sewed the buttons on this card and I put a variety of actual buttons on there and then I stuck the other one on the back side once I'd stitched these little pearlized buttons in little pearl buttons in and I did some stamping on there again I did some stamping on that one put the little label on with the brads on it did I leave that open yes I did so I could actually use that to slot something in so I just glued it at the top and at the bottom so that I could slide something inside of there and then this was the pretty little pink one I put two paper buttons on two real buttons on did some stamping and then here I've attached a little bulb pin and I put on the bulb pin some more of the little pearl buttons and a little piece of crochet lace and again I would just cover that back side up so I'd take the pin out cover the back side up and then put the the pin back in place so those are the little button cards that you'll find in the uh, Kofi shop please go and download it have fun playing with it and creating your own versions of these uh, but as I say for the swap that I'm doing on the Facebook group I just thought this particular one looked great in the pocket and that's what I'm going to request one of the things that you make uh, to go in this pocket for the swap Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it's given you some inspiration to go off and go and make your own, especially as you've now got a freebie to play with as well. OK, thanks for joining me and it's been lovely seeing you all here again and welcome to all the newbies. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us and subscribing and I'll see you all again really soon in another video, no doubt. See you later. Bye.